Welcome everyone. In this session, we are going to talk about KVM quick introduction and uh, its pros and cons. What is KVM? So KVM stands for Kernel Based Virtual Machine. KVM is a virtualization infrastructure for the Linux kernel that turns a kernel into a hypervisor. KVM was merged into Linux kernel, mainline in kernel version 2.6.20, which was released on 5th of Feb 2007. And now we are in uh, 2017. So this technology is not new. From last 10 years, it's active and widely used by most of the enterprises. If you have recently heard uh, the new Amazon instances, which are basically C5, uh, at present which I'm aware of they are going to use a Amazon version of KVM hypervisor so it's important to understand KVM how it works in many companies uh, they use KVM as hypervisor because that's free of course they don't need to pay anything to support uh, vendors or for licensing in case you want some vendor support from uh, any specialized company or vendor that's up to you on my screen you can see i have listed a couple of pro and cons of kvm or you can say the benefit of features and drawbacks so in benefits of features uh, first thing is performance and scalability kvm provide near native performance which make it a scalable solution lower cost kvm is open source so no vendor local contracts Maintaining the virtualization infrastructure is easy. You don't need a rocket science skills to manage KVM. So KVM is very easy too. KVM is very secure. KVM supports a security feature such as SC Linux to make it more secure. As KVM is part of uh, OS mainline, so whatever feature your operating system supports from security point of view, you can apply those features into KVM. And uh, you can see a statement here, which is not as specially put. There is no guarantee to any hypervisor that they are bug free. So any operating system, any hypervisor, any tool, definitely they can be compromised from security point of view, but only assurance which we look from uh, the providers that they provide bug fix or security updates to keep the platform secure and uh, KVM got plenty of uh, open source developers which are constantly providing updates and new features. KVM supports live or offline VM migration. This feature helps when any maintenance is planned on KVM host. Let's say you got uh, two nodes as KVM hosts. On one machine uh, you have five KVM guests on other five and uh, you got some maintenance activity plan so what you can do you can move or migrate all the virtual machines from one server to other it means uh, you can do carry your maintenance activity with your vendor once migration is completed you can move back the machines kvm is fully virtualized kvm is a full virtualization technology as opposed to para virtualization technique thus no modification are needed in guest operating systems kvm is open source as i mentioned uh, it is maintained by a large number of open source developer community so you will be getting a uh, time to time updates various file system support kvm support all type of file systems supported by mainstream linux kernel so whatever file system your kernel support, KVM is definitely going to support it. One important feature which I like, but uh, I can see uh, this option is dangerous too, that is resource over committing. This allows you to allocate more virtualized CPU and memory than available resource on your host. The VM can uh, use whatever the requirement and uh, other VMs can use unused resources. For example, let's say on your guest machine, you want to allocate uh, 40 GB of RAM, but your base machine on which uh, the KVM guest is running that got 20 GB free, you can still allocate 40 GB. So that is called over committing. 
what are the drawbacks of KBM? I've listed two drawbacks only, but there are a few others, but these are the main ones. Uh, KVM su is supported by certain processor types. You can go to this particular link and you can see which processor types are supported. Uh, it's not supported by every processor. And KVM got complex networking. If you want to set up networking for KVM, it's a bit uh, difficult. It's complex. But I don't consider it as a big drawback. That's something I thought to share with you guys. In last session, uh, I have uh, told I will be talking about whether KVM is type 1 or type 2 hypervisor. So the distinction between uh, type 1 or type 2 hypervisor is not clear. Linux KVM, basically that's a kernel module that effectively convert the host operating system to a type 1 hypervisor. But at the same time, since Linux distribution still general purpose operating system with other application competing for VM resources, so KVM can be also categorized as type 2 hypervisor. You can think of in a way uh, that uh, KVM, when you install Linux on your physical hardware, with KVM, it turns kernel into hypervisor, right? So that basically same which type 1 hypervisors are doing but at the same time uh, your linux operating system may be running some applications some monitoring tools some other utilities so other applications are also competing with the uh, kvm resources so that uh, turns into type 2 hypervisor also so there is no clear distinction whether kvm is fit into type 1 or type 2 I have uh, this reference page uh, from Wikipedia from where this information uh, is taken. Few commonly used terms in this session. When I say host, host is basically server hosting the guest VMs. That is going to be your machine where KVM will be installed. Virtual machine or domain or VM or guest KVM. That's a guest KVM created on a KVM host. What Manager. Word Manager is a graphical tool for deploying and managing virtual machines. Word Install. Word Install is a command line tool to create or manage your virtual machines or guest KVMs. So, guys, uh, these are the terms which I will be using in the coming sessions. That's it in this session. Thank you, guys.